are welcome to the Lenten Talk of the year 2021, proudly sponsored by the Diocese of Ifo Anglican Communion. My name is Reverend Canon Stephen Adeni, Vicar of our Savior's Anglican Church, Ijoku. I would like to share something very important with you today. In our diocese, the Lord, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, has laid on our bishop to tag the year 2021, the year of our divine hope. You might not be from our diocese, but I tell you, you can tap from this blessing. So I'm going to speak on a subject that is related to divine hope. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for the privilege of sharing your word at this moment. The Bible says, flower fades and grass with us, but the word of God will stand forever. I'm praying, Lord Jesus, that you will use me as much as you can to speak to your people, that after this sermon, their life will never remain the same. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, my subject today is divine safety. My text is taken from Psalm 91. I will take my time to read through the old psalm. Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the floor and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feather, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in thy hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample on the feet. Because he has made, set his love upon me, therefore. I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? What a wonderful psalm. Let me start by telling you people of God. End time prophecy is full of warnings of coming great calamities. The book of Revelation warns us of great upheaval. It tells of great earthquake, terrible plagues, and unthinkable death tolls. However, there is a good news in there. It also clearly states that there will be survivors. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself warns us of wars and rumors of wars. He then said, these were only the beginning of sorrows. Mm. I believe that we have already entered that time of sorrow. These sorrows will continue to grow until the glorious parousia. I mean the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when you look at our country today, what do we see? Killing, kidnapping, here and there. Accident of every form. All of this thing can easily bring in phobia. Then the question is, how can we be safe in the midst of this? That's why we are going to look at Psalm 91. In Psalm 91, the Lord promises protection to those that hope in him, to those that live in a secret place, 
to those who put their trust in him alone. These people will have divine safety of the Lord. He promises to protect them from the kind of disaster described in the book of Revelation. What then is this secret place? And how can we be able to abide therein? Here we will study Psalm 91 in verse by verse detail so that we might be able to understand what the protection of God is for them that live in his secret place. Number one, he that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The secret place is the very shadow of the Almighty. Those who live in the secret place live under the shadow of the Almighty God. This means that they are very close to God. Those who abide in God's secret place literally live with God. What do I mean? They live in the same house with God under the same roof. They are very close to God. May I tell you, you cannot get much closer than this to live with God. Now, when you go through the scripture in Acts of Apostles chapter 15, verse number after Acts chapter 5, verse 15, there is a story of the apostle Peter. In those days, the scripture recorded that the shadow of Peter was found healing the sick. Now, listen to me. If the shadow of the apostle was healing the sick, how much more do we want to say about the shadow of the Almighty God? They that dwell in the secret place of the Lord shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. To these close, anyone who wants to live with God must abstain from sin. Don't forget. So someone who abides in the secret place live in the house of the Lord. And in the house of God, danger is never found there. Number two. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Those who live in God's secret place will declare him to be their refuge and their fortress. This means not to put your confidence in human strength. You are not going to put your confidence in mighty wars. You are not going to put your confidence in army might. You won't put your confidence in fortification and all other man-made preparation. Put your trust in the Lord and make him your refuge. For those who dwell in the secret place, they will declare that he is their refuge. When you say God is your refuge, what does that mean? The place you can run to for safety. If you say God is your fortress, what does that mean? The place that protects you from an invading enemy. They will be able to say that their trust is in him. They will confess this audibly. To live in God's secret place means to make the Lord our refuge and you put your trust in him alone. Number three. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the floor. I'm going to explain the word floor here. Now, he will deliver thee from the snare of the floor and from the noisome pestilence. Those in the secret place will be delivered from the snare of the floor. Now, the English word floor in Hebrew, the word that was used in Hebrew does not only mean anyone who catches bird. In Proverbs chapter 6 verse 5, that word was translated floor. What does that mean? This is an individual attempting to trap something. However, it's not a bird, but believers. Hmm. Now, let's go to the scripture. In verse Peter chapter 5, verse 8, the scripture says, Be sober and be vigilant, because of your adversary, the devil, roaring like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now, that's what we mean by floor. Now, when you are in the secret place of the Lord, the Lord protects you from all this enemy around you, because he is the almighty God. Number four, he shall cover thee with his feather, and under his wing shall thou trust. His trust shall be thy seed and buckler. In the secret place, divine shelter is found. Number five, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day. Let me come and tell you, people of God. Fear has been one of the instruments of the devil to destroy so many lives. Anybody who trusts in the Lord, there is no place for fear in their heart. 
may I go on to explain to you, the opposite of fear is faith. If there is a fear in your heart, your faith is lacking. There is no faith in you. Now, if you are in the secret place of the Lord, you must kill your fear. Why do you need to do that? Listen, let me explain. In the scripture, the word fear not is found 365 times. What does that signify? That tells you that every day, in a day, I mean in a year, we have 365 days. Every day, the Lord is saying, fear not. You need not to entertain fear in your heart. Why? Because someone is with you. And who is that person? His name is called Emmanuel. God with us. If you have got God with you, why will you be afraid? Number six, nor for the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at the noon day. When you are under God's protection, you have no reason to fear. We are not to be afraid of the terror by night. We don't fear things that cause us terror in the night. Whatever it may be, nightmare, intruder, name it. You need not to be afraid because God is with you. The one that is with you is a mighty, terrible one. He can deliver you at any time. He can stand and fight your battle. He has never lost a battle. So when you put your confidence in God, your, your, your safety is guaranteed. You have your divine security because God is with you. Number seven, a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand. But, I love this, it shall not come near thee. People of God, look at what is happening in the world today. Rumors of death everywhere. Death is even taking place. People are dying. In fact, dying very closely to you. But the scripture says, you only hear about it. It's not going to come near you. Why? Because your, your wall of security is made by God. In the book of Zechariah chapter 2, the Bible says, I will be a wall of fire for you within and without. That's what God is doing for people that trust in him. That's what God is doing for his children that believe in him. Now, let me go on to let you know that there shall not evil before thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. No evil shall happen to you when you are in the secret place. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. That's what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 21. People of God, I'm here to put your mind to rest that only those who hope in God, only those who trust in God are guaranteed divine safety. God has never failed. And I love you to say that to yourself. My God will never fail me. This God you are serving is a God that is committed to his word. If he says anything, he will do it. The Bible says God is not a man that he will lie. Neither a son of man that will change his mind. Now in Titus chapter 1 verse 2, the Bible says, He that created the heaven and earth will not lie. In Hebrew, the Bible says, by these two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. I bet with you, my God is not a liar. All of these things that are written in Psalm 91, they are meant to be fulfilled in the life of those that hope and trust in God. The question is, do you hope in God? Do you trust in God? Do you believe in God? Is your security in God? How much faith do you have in God? In a time of trial like this, in a time that the whole nation is in pandemic, in a time that series of evil things are happening, I need you to put your trust in God. I need you to believe in God. Work with God and you will never regret it. As we are looking at God, looking up to God in this Lenten season, I need you to believe God. I need you to trust Him. I need you to put your confidence in Him and it will never fail you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for the privilege of sharing your word. I pray for everyone listening to my voice right now. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may you never run into any kind of danger in the name of Jesus Christ. As many of you that are believing in God, as many of you that are listening to this sermon and you want to put your trust in God, in the name of God, I declare God's divine security will be upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I cover you with the blood of Jesus. Apostle Paul says, henceforth, let no one trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. I place upon you the mark of the Lord. No evil will befall you. It shall be well with you. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. I'll see you some other time.